Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Well, Kimberly Bakara, 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 Murgatroyd, how are you? Still trying to find that glass you broke is on it, the internet. Is it Bakara, Bakara, or Bakara? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's a really effing expensive glass. That's what I know. So pissed off. One of the things that we do at the end of the day is we have a great glass of wine using the Bakara. I'm a going to call it crystal glass that our friend Darren gave us and the fucker broke last night while I was washing it and I'm so pissed off. So that was a a, a $200 morning this morning replacing the glasses because we couldn't live without those glasses. You can't actually drink wine out of any other glass now. No, I can't anyway. But listen, this is not what we're here to talk about today. We are here to talk about not fucking something up. How do you like that? Oh, that was a good segue. So look, um, I think it's very easy to take something that you have a level of success with and screw with it. Let me rephrase this. Let me let me put it better because it's jumbled in my mind. That's what, we're, you know what here, we're here for your therapy. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use it in the context of the example that we just went through. So- As some of you know, we have been toying with the idea of doing a video podcast. So if you have a successful podcast, why would you fuck with it and do something different? Because everybody else is. Well, yes. Sorry, I had to. That actually is. It does does play into a lot of people's decision-making process, including yours. It's like, well, everybody's going to video. we, We should go to video. So there is a bit of everybody else is doing it. So it's the wave of the future and we should give it a shot. That is in this decision that we made, and it's in everybody else's decisions on anything. Pretty yes, much. yes, that implied jealousy and, and envy. Not but, jealousy. But that's, that's not what, what I'm meant. saying. I'm saying, oh, everyone's going to video. It must be the way of the future. Yeah, like not necessarily like I'm so jelly there on you know video podcasting. Yeah, right. So, By the way, FYI, we had a video podcast in 2006. People, 2006. So we have this thing where we're like, okay, well, we're doing the podcast. The podcast is working out really well. Let's three people try and, seem to like it. <laughs> three people seem to like it. Let's try and pump it up a little bit. So let's do video. And there was a lot of fucking shit. And the reason why I'm telling you the story will make sense at the end of the story, because I want you to see yourself in this story with what you're currently doing that's working and whether or not you should step out of the successful thing that you're currently doing. okay, Or or just trying something new. Or trying something new, because there's a delicate balance between the two. So let me explain the podcast story, and then you can sort of like use that as a lens to see yourself in it. 
So we're, we're going along just fine with the podcast. We're getting great response. People are into it and blah, blah, blah. So we say, okay, let's go to video. Now, when you go to video, what that means is that there's a lot of things that have to happen. Number one is you have to get a camera. Okay, well- No, you have to get three cameras. Well, (laughs) if you're gonna do a camera, how do you wanna do the camera? Well, the camera you get can't be a DSLR camera because they don't really go past 30 minutes. So what do you need? Well, you need like a proper video camera. Like the old school ones, yeah, because they can go for like an hour. So that makes sense if you're trying to edit down a half hour episode. Okay, so how many do I get? Well, you need three. Why do you need three? Well, you need one pointing at you, one pointing at the guest, and the other one pointing at the side of you. Well, if you're going to do that, well, then you're going to need a switcher because you have to be able to switch between which view you're looking at. Okay. And then when you do that, then you're going to need an editor because the editor is going to have to take the cuts and put on camera the one that's speaking and then the next one that's speaking. And then, and then lights, then, camera, action, then lights, all camera, of the extra right? stuff. So then there's a million steps that are associated with doing this. So we're like, okay, well, fuck it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do all that. We're just gonna get one camera. Then we get one camera and we're looking at the camera and not at each other. So basically, if you look back, you'll see Kim looking at my ear and me looking at the camera. Okay. Because no one knows where to look. And here's the thing. In our current studio, we sit across from each other so we can see each other's face, feel each other's energy. There's a more intimate conversation happening. Whereas when we're standing side by side, it reminds me of like when we were standing on the stage at like these events that we would go to and we were both looking at the audience and it was more like giving a speech versus having a conversation. And it bothered me. Well, that's it. I think you nailed it right there. What it was, was we were talking individually. We were talking to the person watching as opposed to talking to each other, which is what people came here for in the first place right. to hear that. So, so if you watch the last two ones that we did where we had video, we're done. <laughs> we're okay. not doing it anymore. <laughs> now, the reason, why, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I wanted you to see it from concept to fuck up, okay? So now, now we're looking and saying, okay, so we tried it, and so we're not gonna do it anymore. We're gonna go back to it. But what we learned is that I also did it with my long form interviews that I do on Monday and it worked there. And the reason why it worked there is because I'm looking at the guest where I wasn't doing that prior because I wasn't doing Zoom prior. So I actually learned something from it. So it was a double edged sword. It was, this completely was a fail but it was a complete success. It's almost like the person who created post-it notes. Okay. You know, the, the person who created post-it notes created something that was supposed to be a super glue that you could not separate. It was like even stronger than like regular super glue. But what he created was something that was the exact opposite. It was something that was like barely sticky And then he asked himself the question, well, how can I apply this barely sticky thing? And then they came up with the idea of post-it notes. So you don't want to be the one that is saying, I'm not at all going to step out because something is working. I'm not going to try something new. Here's the important part. The important part is the evaluation of whether or not something is working. Because there are many times that people will say, you know what, you need a better morning routine. And they'll like add a 5 a.m. workout. And then they'll add, like Rob's really good at doing these kinds of things. He'll be like, I'm going to get up at 4.45 and I'm going to do a workout, a meditation, a this, a that, a partridge in a pear tree. And then, you know, his eyes are rolling back in his head by 8.45 that night. And there is an element of, okay, so you tried it. But is it actually working? Okay, it could be working for your morning and getting you on a better start, but you're basically a vegetable by 8.15. So is that really what we want in our life? There's the second step of this that sometimes I feel like people, and including, of course, us, will implement something new or go to video in business or add a new morning routine or try something new, but they don't evaluate whether or not it's working or maybe they evaluate it too soon or they wait it too long. I don't know. The reason this came up last night with our Friday going to video is I said, okay, so what is the goal of going to video? It's to get new eyeballs, right? And to increase the number of people that are watching, listening to the show. 
So how are we evaluating that? What's the strategy for that? Like, What's the marketing strategy for that? All of the things. And then we started looking at the impact on our life. Like, We were traveling last week. Because we went to video, we couldn't record a podcast. But we travel so much in a non-pandemic <laughs> that it would be really hard for us. Like We went to Europe for four months and recorded podcasts. Would we lug this entire porn lighting system that Rob brought out? He did said you the, porn? I did. It's like every time he has this set up, I feel like it's a different kind of video that's about to go down. Is it reminding you of something in that's my history? <laughs> familiar to you? <laughs> no. Because I never thought of when the lights no, were like, on like shooting 70, a porn video. No, I mean, I, other than the mustache okay. I, that I had. Okay. So other than that, I think the first time I saw the lights set up, you had it set up with the couch. And so... Oh, that's what brought back the memories. Brought back the memories of of doing the porn. Uh, Side note, I was never a porn star. So... By the way, can you imagine that as a life? I mean, I was a porn actress, but not a star. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Can you imagine that as a life? Nope. But no Noctia, or maybe there is a Noctia if you do. I don't know. But I'm bummed. Okay. So so the point is though, I'm sorry, Rob, to cut you off. The point is you have to have an evaluation strategy that you are going to use anytime you're changing something. And sometimes it's not like Rob could have said to me, well, I mean, we're up double. We have double the amount of people watching on video and you know all of that. But there's so much negative. It wraps it all kind of back to our Tony Robbins problem solving strategy, right? Or decision making matrix that is going to be in our upcoming dream life course. It kind of brings it back to that to me because it is possible that us going to video if we did it with three cameras and you know an entire crew here would be amazing and how much of an upside truly is there for the amount of downside and lack of mobility that it creates for us well let me tell you one of the things that is really amazing about me i am completely willing to abandon something that I no longer see is working. And I am completely willing to continually to try things. I will add a vitamin into my morning. And if I don't feel that there's a difference, I'll kill it. I can add a new peptide. If it doesn't work, I'll kill. I'll add a new stretch. How long do you wait though? Like, do you think you kill it too soon? No, I think that I get the, like, for example, when I got on testosterone, the doc said, you should probably not feel anything for three months. And so I went, okay, that's the evaluation. So I should not. It has now kicked in. I definitely feel it. So I think you have to be really, really clear on when you take score of whether or not it's working. And also, there's a lot of people, and you may be one of them. This takes a little uh, self-introspection to figure out. But there are people that will hold on to some idea, some change, something out of personality type. And when we did our virtual mastermind, we had a couple of people in there that were going to stay addicted, connected, doing something they will, when they set out to do something, that shit will not fail. And they look at changing and modifying as failure and not as changing and modifying. So look into your personality. I actually have friends that are in marriages that are completely not working. They're not happy, but they will not let that damn marriage go because it's going to be to them a failure. Whereas I see it as a success to look at something and say, you know what? This is not working. This is not what I want. This is not what I signed up for. This is not where I want my life going. This is not where I want my business going. I am going to pivot. And I think that takes a lot of personal growth to do. And I think a lot of people stay the girl or the guy that stays in the relationship way too long. The girl or the guy, um, Robert, that stays in the career way too long because it's comfortable and it's normal and you're not willing to pivot. And so I think this, it sounds so easy. Like, oh, if you're trying something and you don't, it doesn't really work that well, then change it. It's so much deeper than that because one, it's a personality thing. There are people that have shiny ball syndrome. I deal with this in network marketing all the time. They come in, they think they're going to make a million dollars in a month. I tell them that's not possible. And within two to three months, they're like switch and they move on to something next. And those are the people that typically have had seven 
100 careers or 700 side hustles in the course of their life because they don't stay long enough for something to work. And then you have the person that's like, I will stay, I'm going down with the ship, you know? And I think the sweet spot, like Rob said, is somewhere in the middle. Like, where is the good place of evaluation? And what are you evaluating? Are you evaluating success only? Are you evaluating how does it affect your life? How does it affect your health? Rob, when he was getting up at 4.45 in the morning, was horrible for both of us because I had to set the alarm and hear the alarm for him to get up at 4.45, which meant I was now up at 4.45 and we were both exhausted and grumpy. So even though it was probably giving him the hours he wanted of quiet, that wasn't healthy for our life probably for our health and definitely not for our marriage. So I think you have to have all different test points for any pivots you make in life, whether it's your personal life, your health, your business or whatever. So yes, I agree with all of that. And I also think that there are some things you evaluate and say, okay, well, you know, I'm doing this thing, so it's working very well, but I want to just try and change it as we've discussed. But there are other things that you largely ignore that should be changed. So a good example of that is I will see people doing workouts that they've done since high school and they're now 62 right? They're at the gym. They look like silverback gorillas. Throwing around a couple bicep and, curls. Yeah. They go back in, they do a little, uh, couple of bicep curls. They get a nice little bead as Sebastian Maniscalco says, <laughs> and they, and they leave the gym, right? So that person should, a tip for somebody that's worked for me, I don't know if it'll work for you, but you can consider it, is Whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a workout or whether it is a phone call that you had with a client or just any sort of like activity, look and say, if I were to make this 10% better, what would I do? How can I make this 10% better? So you do your workout and you say, okay, if I were to do this 10% better, what could I do to do this? And so I'm always asking myself those questions. And so Like one of the things that I tried the other day is to do my pre-workout stretches post-workout. Now, I know you're supposed to do stretches when you're hot and not when you're cold. And I know you, you know, if you want to do it in both cases, it's even better. But, you know, I generally don't do them before or after. So this time, because I just don't, I don't want to take the time to do them that way. And I should, but I don't. So this time I was like, okay, well, let me do the stretches after. And I finally got into my thick head because you've been telling me that for forever to stretch after the workout and you know for I've got flexibility for flexibility and I've got these like specific back exercises that I do and what a difference because I've always done them before the mobility that I had after the workout was completely different than I had before it so it's like okay well I'm doing these back exercises that are working but how do I make it a little bit better well I make it a little bit better by doing it when I'm hot right? Doing it when I'm warm. That made the difference right there. So I think that there are all kinds of things. And I think we get stuck on things. You know, I once heard it said that the way people dress is when they were in their hottest period, (laughs) right? (laughs) Take the 60 year old guy that's in like Lee jeans or Wranglers, and he's got three buttons unbuttoned, and he's got old spice that he puts on him and he slicks his hair back. That was his hot period. Like he rocked that shit, you know, back in the day and he's still doing it. So that guy needs to reevaluate. How do I get that, you know, Grecian formula 405 (laughs) out of my hair and step into the contemporary? So I think we're taking lots of different paths down this road. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to say is continually evaluate what you're doing. Notice if it's working, but even if it's working, I still think that the evaluation to tinker with it is worth it, but be very, very aware that if you tinker with it and it doesn't make it better, that you need to go back to where it was. Yeah. And be okay with that. And everything is temporary, right? Like we announced we're going to video and three videos in, we're like, we're done. It's not happening. And we're okay with that. And I I know I'm going to have someone who's going to send a message and say, but I really enjoyed the video. It was too much. It's too much for us. So we're not doing that, but be okay with that and be okay with any repercussions from it and just move on, right? Move on and keep tinkering. (laughs) My husband putzes around the house and he tinkers. He tinkers and he putzes. (laughs) You know, I had had somebody the other day reached out to me and said, um, 
would it be okay if I followed you around for the day? I really look up to you. I really look at the kind of things that you're creating, and I feel like I can learn a lot. If you followed me around for the day, it would be the most uninteresting day you've ever had in your life. I look like I have two clay feet, okay, walking around and bumbling through the day. I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly evaluating, I'm trying different things. I'm not that interesting to follow. So anyway, I just thought that was funny. I don't know. I'm having images in my head right now of what that would actually look like. First of all, they would spend three and a half hours, bring sunscreen because you'll be at the beach for three and a half hours doing a workout. You know what's great about what you're about to say? This is what makes this show so special. It's a conversation. Right. Like if we were out to dinner right now, we would be having the exact same right. conversation. It's kind of like when we have conversations with people and there's 12 balls in the yeah. air of conversation and right. it's like we haven't completed any of them. Right. But this little tangent here I shall take, look at the life that you created for yourself. Everything is an intentional design. Like the other day, our friends, Chris and Darren, were texting him wanting to get an answer on doing a boy's dinner. Do we call boys? Probably guy's dinner. Girls would call it boys. We call it guys, yeah. Guy's dinner. And he wasn't responding in time. And they were like, look, we know you've been at the beach now for two hours. You're capable of responding. You're definitely not working. Rob has set up his day exactly He wakes up at the time he wants. He does the meditation he wants. He builds in the things that are important. And then at one o'clock, he's done working. (laughs) And he goes and he enjoys the life that he created. So you work, you do some version of work in the morning from let's call it eight to noon. And then you have lunch and you putts. And then at one, you jump on your bicycle with all of your things. You should see him going to, he looks slightly like a mobile home. He has one of everything on the bike and he's going down to the beach and spending three and a half hours coming home. You created this life so intentionally. And I guess the years of slaving in a place you didn't like created the contrast for you to create this life. And I'm so grateful that we are getting to do this together. And you guys listening will be so grateful because we're putting basically the entire path we took and all of the the strategies, not specifically the business ideas that we took, but the strategies that we use to create them into an entire free course for you. And if you want that course, it's coming out soon. Text Dream Life to 310-388-9724. And uh, you will be on the VIP list to get that course. Because I got to tell you, every day we're adding more and more things to it and more and more concepts that we're uncovering. We're literally, I feel like a, what do they call the, the kind of detective that goes back Forensic. A foren- I feel like a forensic detective going back over the last 10 years and grabbing the nuggets that worked and then melding it with the hindsight's 2020 of what we should have done and how it should have been laid out and how we could accelerate the process. And so that's going to be in that dream life course. So if if you're you're down to stop working around noon <laughs> and design your life around your desires, then jump on that. Yeah, well, I mean, basically what we did was we got one more message from somebody saying, must be nice, you know, if we're traveling around the world or if we're taking time off at the beach that we just decided to say, okay, you know what? We're going to reverse engineer exactly what we did and we're going to give it to you for free. So be on the lookout for that. It should be available I would, Soon. I would say by the end of the year, somewhere by the end of the year. It's just about done. It'll be like a little Christmas present. It'll be like a little Christmas present and it's all F-R-E-E. Well, do you have anything else that you need to say prior to <sighs> the end of this sojourn? I don't even know if I use that word right. No. Okay, that's it, everybody. <laughs> have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right, thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.